Okay, I just wanted to give you guys an update on the 1712 transceiver. This is my dual band uh, 17 and 12 meter transceiver that I'm, um, I've been working on. And the first thing I built was the VFO using this fantastic, beautiful variable capacitor out of a Heath, out of a Helicrafters HT37. Uh, I think in an one of the earlier videos, I described my efforts to get it going, to get it stable. The only thing I've done recently is I've added this circuitry in here. This is basically a relay that, when activated, switches in this trimmer cap, which is a 5 to 25 picofarad NP0 uh, trimmer. And when I switch this in, it allows me to shift the, uh, the VFO frequency down a bit to where I need it to to get me onto 17 meters. A lot of this is being driven by the frequency of the crystal filter, which is around 21.47 megahertz. I had to go with that frequency because that's where there were computer crystals available. Um, in a perfect world, you'd pick a uh, an intermediate frequency that allowed 17 meters on one side of zero beat and 12 meters on the other in the kind of dual band configuration, similar to what I use with the Mythbuster rig. But I couldn't quite get there because the only crystals that were really suitable in frequency were at 21.47. So I have to shift the VFO frequency. It, it always operates in the 3.3, 3.5 megahertz range, somewhere in there. But on 12, I needed it to be a little bit up. And on 17, I needed it to be a little down. So no problem. When I go to 17, this band switch over here, one of the things it does is it switches in this circuitry, which shifts the uh, the VFO frequency down a bit to where I needed it. Um, the other thing I did is I recently built the, uh, the band pass filters. Um, and I had a lot of trouble with the band pass filters. It's surprising because it seems like a really routine thing to do, but it's harder than it seems. And... Frankly, a lot of the literature, a lot of the books um, kind of let you down and they don't really give you good guidance on how to produce the, the bandpass filters that you need. Um, also, a lot of the software comes up with weird stuff. I'm, I'm a big fan of LC software, L-C-E-L-S-I-E. -E. I also use the A-A-D-E, almost all digital electronic software, and I've come up with a, I found a link where you can get the updated software for almost all digital electronics uh, for their software package for designing filters. And uh, I also use LT Spice when I'm building these things. But I, I struggled, and I, I built several, and it wasn't working right. I had troubles in this area, too, back in the um, when I was building the Mythbuster rig. But I came upon something that really helped me a lot. And that is the website of Hans Summers, G Zero UPL. Um, Hans, uh, his company sells little kits for bandpass filters. I highly recommend them. He's just he just uses two. Uh, it's it's basically a DTC Delta Tango Charlie dual tune circuit approach. Basically two tune circuits, and you can see this is a twelve meter filter here. One tune circuit here, another tune circuit here joined by one small capacitor and with impedance matching handled by link coils wound atop the uh, the coils that we have for the, the main uh, LC circuits. I, I, I didn't buy the kits from Hans, I just but, but he's very nice. He has his schematics and all the parts and stuff on his website. So it was an easy thing for me to do just to kind of homebrew these two filters and then switch them with this one little relay that I have in the center here. So when I throw the band switch, not only does it change the frequency of the VFO, but it also switches the, uh, the band pass filters, which is the other thing I had to do. Now, um, this is my first journey up into the higher frequency range of 12 meters, up at around 24.940 megahertz, which is kind of high for me. And I'm not used to kind of band conditions up there. I've also been trying to study, with the help of Farhan and others, the the proper kind of uh, band uh, uh, gain distribution 
uh, and noise distribution uh, situation with a superhet receiver, which will one day soon be a transceiver. And I'm not quite there yet. I don't understand it all yet. I'm studying it. It takes some, it's, I was telling Farhan the other day that building one of these rigs is not a, a simple matter of figuring out how to build an amplifier, a mixer, um, a filter, and an oscillator, and then putting them all together and voila, you have a super head. That's a big part of it. But you have to figure out how much gain, for example, to put ahead of the, the mixer. There's the mixer. Um, how much gain do you put in front of it? How much gain do you put between the mixer and the bandpass filters? How much IF gain do you put on either side of the crystal filters? How much audio frequency gain do you put over there? Um, it, these are kind of complicated questions, but I continue to struggle with it. I'm trying to, to learn how, how it all works. A um, couple other things, I have um, I needed to get the output uh, signal from the VFO down to the uh, 7 dBm level that the uh, ASK-1 ASK mixer needed. So I built a little uh, Pi network um, uh, attenuator here to drop it down to the 7 dBm, which is about 0.5 volts RMS. I did that, that worked fine. I also need another attenuator over here at the uh, at the output of the balanced um, of the product detector in this case, and that really is recommended. It's about I have I think about about five or six dB in there to uh, just let you let make sure that this uh, that all the different frequencies that are coming out of this mixer, including those up in the higher frequency range, find a, a proper termination, so you don't get a whole lot of kind of VHF signals floating around in this HF transceiver. I'm also starting to um, kind of color code the the wiring. Most of this wiring is either for band switching or TR switching. And I've decided to go with kind of orange red for receive and green will be for transmit. Um, yellow will be for band switch and white will be for those stages that remain powered uh, in both transmit and receive, and there are a few stages uh, like that. I, this, this space on the board has been left open. This is where most of the transmitter circuitry will go, and um, that'll be, I think, fairly straightforward. Low-pass filters here, power amplifier here, drivers coming down in here. Um, I'll do this pretty much the way I did it with the Mythbuster. Um, I've drawn up a little diagram to show you what the receivers look like. Actually, I, I like building the receivers more than I like building the transmitter. It's great fun when you finish the receiver and you turn it on and you can listen with your creation. And we'll do that in a minute, but, but here's what it, what it looks like. The signal comes in from the antenna and it goes straight right now to bandpass filters for 12 and 17 meters. From there, it goes to one uh, TIA amplifier right here built on a board that Todd, uh, K7TFC, out in Portland, he sent me a bunch of these boards that he's been building, and it's just great fun, little TIA amps, and you get to use the, uh, the chart provided by Wes Hayward to select how much gain you'll have. So on that one, I built it for 10.7 dB, and then from there, we go to the Ask One mixer that my friend Armand, WA1UQO, gave me a long time ago, and that takes a signal from the VFO that also goes in there. And out here comes the, uh, the, uh, the signal at uh, you know 21.4 megahertz. The signal has been now moved to 21 point, uh, up to yeah, 21.4 where I have the, uh, um, the filter. I have two TIA amplifiers here, both of them running at about 18.47 dB. They go into the crystal filter which has a loss of about 6.82 dB. So these two amps and the filter come out to a gain of about 30 dB. The front end has a, has a gain of about 2.25 dB. Then it goes to another TIA amplifier that adds an additional 10.7 dB of gain. Then from there it goes to the, uh, in this case, the product detector, which will also be the balanced modulator fed by 
VFO circuitry, which I have up here. After that, it's one, two stages of audio amplification, and then onto the speaker. So let's listen to this thing, and hopefully something will be audible. It is now uh, Sunday, the 13th of March, 2022, and it's about um, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, let me crank up the audio here, and let's see if we can listen. We're starting out on 12 meters. Imagine that. I could certainly imagine that. Uh, yeah, it was about uh, 40 some years ago. Um, at the time, I was working up in uh, Pittsburgh and I was looking to make a change. And I interviewed uh, a couple of people down in San Antonio and I thought I had something. And then also in Houston. But uh, I wasn't too, too thrilled with Houston. But uh, San Antonio seemed really nice. And uh, it, it wasn't a good fit, though. And uh, then a little bit later, about two years after that, I moved down here to the Washington, D.C. area. I got a job offer, and it was, uh, it, was, it was a great thing. I, had, I just had a wonderful career. I retired about uh, six months ago and uh, loved most of it, I'd say, about 90% of it. And, uh, but I'm enjoying retirement now, too. Just can't quite get into the hang of it yet. Just uh, trying to get my feet in the ground on retirement. Ronnie, go ahead. How long ago did you retire? Uh, back in June. Oh, okay. Well, man, I'll tell you, I retired at age 54. I was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, That's all I hear on 12 right now. And at that time, Motorola was into all kinds of things besides two-way radio. All right, let's switch down to 17. So to go to 17, I just throw the switch. Boom. Watch at daylight savings time. Okay, well, many thanks for the first night. Thank you. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye. That DX station. Let's see where he's from. Uh, Q1 for two, I think, again. Okay, Q1 for Kill a Oscar 2, I think. Kill a Oscar 2 again. Kill a Oscar 2 again, please. Go ahead, I think that's the uh, activity group at the high end of 17 meters. Uh, 
You can hear some no noise on the band as I tune around. That's local noise, probably somebody using one of these little switching generators. Not in the house, but in the neighborhood. You hear it there. So I've got it set up so I cover most of the, almost all of the 17 meter and 12 meter phone bands with this thing. Now, I tune a little bit too low on 17, but there's an advantage in that I, I'm down here at the FT8 frequency. I can tell if anything's happening on the band because you can hear the kind of warbling of FT8 signals down here on 17. And if I tune a little bit up, I can get to the uh, the frequency of the Northern California BX Association CW beacons. IU2 IDU. I heard him on heard him on 12 the other day. All right, yeah. All right, so there you have it. It's um it's a fun project. I'm, I'm learning a lot from it. I'm trying to improve on, on previous rigs. I think I've already achieved that with the, uh, the bandpass filters. Also, uh, Todd's uh, boards here for the, for the TIAs are, are really nice. And, um, he sent me a bunch of them. So I've, I've stuffed them with components. It's good too, because it's like a, it's like a kit, but having built several, many TIAs before, it's a, it's a kit that I don't feel bad about using because I, I built the thing myself. And not only that, it's just, it's just, it just helps me kind of concentrate the parts more closely together and use up less space on the, the pine board. I'm glad that I'm building it on the pine board. I think that uh, Frank Jones would be pleased and I still have enough wooden material that I can just build up a front panel and build a, a, a cabinet around it. Uh, on the VFO, the VFO seems really stable, no problems at all, and I have not put it in a hermet hermetically sealed box, or really a box of any sort. It doesn't seem to drift. Now, problems may crop up when I start producing a lot of RF over here, or 5 watts of RF, and I have this big old, very untoroidal, unshielded uh, coil here that might cause trouble. On the BFO... I have a coil here that's about 1.5 microhenries, but it's just a solenoid style coil that I had in the junk box. I probably could would be better off with a shielded toroidal coil up there. And uh, if I have to, I'll, I'll change it. But um, 
really pleased with the way this thing's going. Like I said, building the receivers, I always think, is the fun part. But one of these days, I'm going to have to knuckle down and build the drivers, the, the power amplifiers, the power amplifiers and the, um, and the TR uh, switching arrangements anyway a fun project thanks to everybody who's helped who's contributed parts and ideas and words of encouragement and uh, i'll keep you guys posted on on future developments seven three from northern virginia